When you're really happy, you don't kid yourself. You actually have this ebullience that comes up and actually creates, listen, creates a smile in you. That's fascinating that that's a moment of joy for this person. Today is going to be part one of a exceptional series that is going to actually give you the steps so you can ascend the mountain of enlightenment in regards to happiness and a whole lot of other things you'll find out. And the reason why this series is gonna be done in parts is because at each step you have to accomplish, like if you're gonna climb Mount Everest, there's certain stations you have to make it to or else you just don't get to the top. Uh, it's not possible. So you have to get your gear together, handle the weather in a certain area. Your body has to readjust. If there weren't steps to getting to happiness, we would have 5,000 years, which we've got, of people telling great stories about happiness and about how it's like so easy to get on and on and man, you can make it happen. But what, what, is, what is everybody's interesting in is the novellas, the novels about you know, romance and broken heart and betrayal and upset and people who became mean and powerful people who traded money for uh, everything else and people who have no uh, desire to connect as humans. And you've got Buddha saying that supposedly, which wasn't his whole sentence, that life is suffering. And what he was saying there is that life is suffering as long as you're allowing yourself to get sucked into the matrix. His exact words were the regular life, the normal life for the majority of all human beings everywhere is suffering because they don't wake up to the tools on how to have solutions and make things really work for themselves moment by moment by moment. Because if you said, well, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, and I learned just to be happy no matter what, um, there's a lot of groups who would like for you to believe that, and it's ulcer producing, it's uh, high blood pressure producing, it's allowing you to take uh, a stance away from the reality of what's happening in life. So if you're driving your car and you're gonna go through a intersection, you've got this great ability inside your brain where you can judge distance over time and speeds so you can actually determine whether you're gonna make it to the uh, yellow light uh, before it turns red, or whether you're gonna get caught and maybe get a ticket, so whether they have to speed up or slow down. So you have that ability and that kind of awareness of moment by moment uh, getting the steps to be able to get through that intersection is really sort of the template of everything that has to do with ascending the mountain of enlightenment in regards to happiness and success. And the matrix, as you know, I've presented that to you in previous talks that has just, it's so generally straightforward that if you make it your project after today to go, you know, I am going to make choices that are, I'm making in reality. I'm not gonna make choices just based on some grit idea or some emotional push that somebody says, oh, you could do it, you can do it. What, you're gonna be able to decide. You're gonna put yourself in the driver's seat and you're gonna either press on the gas and go towards the intersection or not. And you're gonna to need to know what's reality. And what's so wonderful about the steps towards happiness, ascending that mountain, is that it's all reality-based. And that's why there's been thousands and thousands of years, starting back with the Bible or the Koran or any of the old, old, old stories are all about misery and problems. And people that are angry at either their, whoever they said was their leader or their philosopher or their king or their, uh, who's giving them the inside information of mystical things, I mean, that, people, that people are arguing against that because they're not happy with the pablum that they're eating every day and saying that should do it. So the first step, and remember I told you we're gonna do steps. The first, and you have to accomplish each step. It's, it's like you, can, you, you must get that the first step, second step, third step, and as long as you include all the steps, then you won't be surprised when all of a sudden you're doing everything 
what you thought was correct, and still it's not correct because you'll be able to backtrack and see, oh, I left the step out. You know, I, I wish we had people who were learning this when we were building uh, space rockets, uh, when the one that blew up with all the astronauts, because it was just a simple, inexpensive O-rings that, you know, wasn't on the checklist that needed to be there. So small things cause big disasters, like a lot of deaths, a lot of families being upset after that, a lot of well-trained people gone. So the reason why I want you to hear that story right off at the beginning is that this planet is set up with really, and that's why I love energy for success, and I love the, all the training that I have gotten going back and forth to China uh, from the Grand Grand Master about you know, all the information from Lao Tzu and his predecessors and the mystical teachers before him, both male and female. So Lao Tzu, as you know, is the one who devised the yin-yang symbol and said that you know, everything in life on this planet really doesn't exist at all. Uh, at all, it doesn't exist at all, except it's actually a vibration. But the vibration is such that your body can associate with the vibration and it has a total reality for you. It has solidness. Now, you don't have to invent that you understand that, like in the movie The Matrix, where he puts his finger through the wall to show that that it, and those kids are bending spoons and making things levitate, that belief systems have a lot to do with how physical reality works. It's much easier than that. You can just look at the fact that if there is going to be existence, in other words, I exist, you exist, the dog exists, the house exists, and it stays there, it doesn't run away, uh, then something has to keep it stable. And what that stable is, is just these simple things that he invented that have been misconstrued forever, which is that there's a positive side and a minus side of the yin-yang symbol. And the minus side, it gets a bad rap. Everyone goes, oh, negative? Oh, negative is bad. Get rid of the negative. I want to stay away from the negative. I want it all positive. Now, there's nothing wrong with wanting more and more things that you like, because that's what this whole talk's about. You're going to like things Otherwise, you're just kidding yourself that you're happy. But when you really like that, like this one lady said, she really liked buying these really cute shoes. You know, and as a guy, um, I wear the finger shoes just for my, just because I want to feel the ground. But the fact that you would want shoes that are cute and you would look at them, I think that's fascinating, that that's a moment of joy for this person. So... When you're really happy, you don't kid yourself. You actually have this ebullience that comes up and actually creates, listen, creates a smile in you. And in teaching with the guided breathing visualizations, the rapid transformational vibrational techniques, um, they're all about changing your vibration in your body of all your sensors, of which you have millions, uh, so that you're pulling in all the energy that's around you all the time so that you're getting stronger and more able in each one of your grade eight. And that progress up the mountain in, in each of the grade eight, so that you have more prowess today than you had yesterday, and that tomorrow you can count on that you're gonna have even more prowess because you've learned more, is the combination of things that eventually will carry you in good stead, which is that learning on this planet through experimentation, which means you're gonna go through periods where you don't know the answer and you have to keep finding out, but finding out in a way that you don't like bet the ranch, you just find out with small things and test them and verify, and then you can be successful in all of your grade eight all the time, but you really must be awake to do that. And we're trained not to be awake. Sorry. It's actually the, the whole program. The whole program on this planet is that we're trained not to be awake. There's a lot of ways not to be awake. I'm going to go into them. But if someone says it's okay not to be awake, then you're going to have a lot of problems if, you, if you're in Chicago and you don't look at the weather in the winter and overnight they had really sudden drop of uh, 
cold and um, the, the sidewalks had black ice on them. And this is a friend's story. Uh, and he went out to get the newspaper in the morning, not thinking that it was going to be a big deal. And, you know, he slid all the way down his sidewalk on his back. And he said, that's it. You know, this is insane. You know, I have to be this much prepared just to even get the newspaper in the morning. So the question is not he should have known. No, there is no shoulds. It's just can you now put yourself in a position where you're always taking in the data of what's reality? And then it's very wonderful experience, which is associated with happiness, is that your prowess keeps getting stronger. As your prowess gets stronger each of the grade eight, you make better decisions. You have healthier life. You're more functional. And what's so important about energy for success and what Lao Tzu figured out, which is that, yes, he lived a long time and his predecessors lived a long, long time. And the point was they didn't live in a nursing home for a long time. They lived getting healthier and healthier and healthier and having more life, more vitality. So from now on, if you're really interested in longevity, and I know so many people are, it, the goal is I'd like to have today be the best day that I ever had in my entire life. And then if I'm going to get another day longevity, okay, I want that day to be even better. Otherwise, what do you want? The, the, a long set of days of eating you know, mashed potatoes every day for the rest of your life or whatever the thing comes around that, that you have to settle for if you don't know these steps. Because you realize almost every person when they're interviewed about happiness and about how their life's going, they say, well, I settled. Because it, it was as good as I think I could make it happen. I, I just didn't think I could make it happen any better. You know, I came from you know, France and I'm just over here trying to become a actor. So I'm living in a garage and I hope to get discovered. This is a real story. Uh, and I'm betting the ranch on that, and maybe he will. But there's thousands of people who come to Hollywood every year with the same dream with not the ability to be Jack Nicholson or not the ability to be Helen Hunt in that great movie, It's um, As Good As It Gets. So I want you to see that there is reality that really makes a big difference in their relationship uh, and so that they can finally experience love and happiness. But you and I actually are being given the responsibility of choosing which side of the yin-yang symbol we're going to uh, work with. How many times a day, do you think? Guess. Once an hour, once in the morning when you write your goals. When? How long? How many times? Now, you're going to say, why is that important? Because we already told you about my friend who slipped on the sidewalk, so he didn't know that it had frozen overnight and they had black ice. And the fact that this whole universe is much more stable than you've been led to believe, um, I mean, it's really stable. The fact is the planets, you know, they've been able to measure their orbits, they've been able to measure zodiac signs, and they've been able to me measure... Uh, where things are and how they're moving. And even though the universe is expanding, every part's expanding at the same time so that it, everything maintains like an okay distance. And so there's nothing like falling out of the sky. So this fear of like, oh, well, the sun's gonna burn out someday. That's so many billions of years ahead that you're not really gonna have to worry about that. What you need to worry about is during the period of time that you get to be here in Disneyland, AKA your life in planet Earth, and using this wonderful spacesuit, this body uh, that's part of whoever created all of this, you know, the squirrels, the grass, the animals. I like to use the word God from my faith. It, is, it could be Mother Nature, it could be the universe, it could be the source energy, the essence of all that gets created. But the fact is, there is a creative physics that is reliable, that, that you can study it. You can use math and figure things out and build bridges and count on the bridge not falling apart if it has these particular criteria. So people don't know where all the minerals that are on this planet or why all those minerals are on this planet, but in the divine wisdom of the creation of this planet and this wonderful bodysuit that we have, uh, it's way advanced. I mean, it's massively advanced. So, so much so that even though I've been a 
endoscopic surgeon for 30 years and two practices and taught all over the world and uh, had a great time uh, teaching surgery and uh, even discovered some things in medicine that really made some difference. Um, it, it really, the world still hasn't advanced that much in terms of people just having everything handled. It's like there's either diseases keep happening or people keep trying to have success with their, their business or their lives or their, uh, their financial or their romantic or their kids. And it's complaint, complaint, complaint. Now, we're going to change the complaining, but we're not going to do that yet. We're going to allow the complaining in the beginning, and we're going to just remove the, the, the D-E-N-Y-I-N-G. Write that word down. That is the key word. D-E-N-Y-I-N-G. Now, if somebody told you, uh, which happens to kids a lot, uh, as a matter of fact, it just happened uh, to a a mother's uh, friend's son, which he went to some party and they gave him a whole bunch of cocktail of different, the latest uh, psychedelics to take. And uh, he died. He vomited, aspirated, died at 24 years old. So why is it that that kind of story has anything to do with you? Well, as far as you're concerned, it doesn't because you're going to deny that. You're going to say, that's them, not me. As a matter of fact, every time you see a statistic about how long your life is going to be, you know, when they count it out in days, you go, that's them, not me. And in terms of whether anything's going to happen to you, there's a whole lot of people that deny uh, what the real facts are. Now, you, the denial can go both ways. That you could be denying that things are negative, and you shouldn't be skiing in an area, which just happened recently when we had a huge dump of snow, uh, 60 inches, and people had real trouble being able to even ski uh, because the, it, it wasn't necessarily safe everywhere or you could see well. So you just don't want to take this massively positive attitude. You want to take a reality attitude, a reality approach. So if you could find out where reality is all the time, the physics are so reliable that if you low, for example, if you if you lower the temperature of water to a certain you know degree centigrade or Fahrenheit, uh, eventually it turns to hard substance ice, and and it's only been that way for five thousand years. It's not changing, just like the sun's not changing. The seasons still continue, and some people go, oh, there was a tornado or there was an earthquake. Well, there's always been earthquakes. There's always been tornadoes. There's always been hurricanes. So this whole thing about positive and negative, you want to not say that the world is set up as positive and negative uh, as equaling good or bad, but you want to see the first part is that the positive and negative is purely a term from physics, that you have to have a positive pole and a negative pole or else there's no vibration going through the two poles, which is what we have as existence. And we are just really wonderful, vibrating energy, dynamic, growing, expanding in the universe. Matter, as Einstein called it, different kinds of matter uh, that compose so many different things that still, people still don't even understand how you can take your hand and um, say, I want to pick up these glasses. And in just that millisecond of picking up the glasses, what happened was, the message had to come from my head down to my hand to say, we're going to pick up glasses, Bob, and move your hand over there. But how far do you move it? Well, I've moved it just to where another message had to come from the fingers, send them back up that, hey, you're getting too close. You're getting closer, closer. You've got the right place. Boom. Close your fingers now. Another message went up and down. And then it said, you can pick it up because it's safe now. So your safety actually exists in the, in the reliable physics of this planet. And why I'm saying that is because that all happens, that path up and down the arm and into your brain at the speed of nanoseconds. You can't even count. There's no way you can even touch it. It's so fast. So for thousands of years, hundreds of years in medicine, we observe things, we enjoy things. But if you just stick with the reality and stick with the physics of it, you're going to find that all the things you want to occur in your life in the grade eight are going to be within your reach, within your grasp. And you're going to have a great time with the practices we've got for you to do 
so that the practices allow you to keep ascending, ascending, ascending. So first thing out of the way, you can't deny whatever is going on around you. The, where you want to be in life, write this down, is AAA. You know, alert, aware, accurate, and really forth, affable. So accurate would mean that I'd have to be awake when I'm doing anything. Yeah, be awake. Find out what's going on. Look at the facts. And then if you want to get anything done, according to Einstein, everything is energy, E, energy, nothing else on the other side of the equation. Pretty simple. All we've got here is E. E is everything. And then what's on the other side? The speed of light squared, which... We all know that the light that travels around is the wonderful aspect of being able to see so many gorgeous, wonderful items that you get to play with on this earth. And also that it has a capacity for you know, true energy uh, uh, usage. But is it energy and speed light? No, there's one more thing in there. Times you. In other words, how you choose to use it. So you are the mass. So mass can be anything that exists. It's just a general word for it. it could be a body, it could be a cup, it could be a pair of glasses. Mass just means a thing that still exists in your world, that you can see it, feel it, look at it, and it's not disappearing like smoke, which doesn't disappear either if you had a good enough microscope to see all the particles in the air. But what's also in the air is lot, thousands and thousands of millions of vibrations. And some of them your sensors take in, and some of them you have already decided you're not taking those in, and that may not be the smartest thing to do. When each day is changing, like the ocean, you've got to constantly, at the till, be able to move the till back and forth, back and forth, or the wheels, so because the ocean is all, the waves are changing. So you've got to keep pulling the boat into the waves so that you're constantly riding whatever the changes are that keep existing. And we have a template that you can use you check an earlier study uh, module we had, the dynamic ocean of change, so that you sort of get with the feeling that, hey, i got to wake up a little bit. There's a lot more going on. But people said, well, you know, that if it's all so simple and if, and if life is so safe and the world's just going to keep expanding for who cares how long because it's so big that it's not even going to matter in terms of my picking up the newspaper today, then what's the benefit of this positive and negative pole that's allowing energy to flow through, which is a vibration, which is what just went up and down my arm, uh, and allowed my hand to pick up the glasses so I could use them. So prowess and function is your steps along the way to happiness. So you're understanding how you're going to be aware of the physics of what's really happening is going to be your door out of misery. And people are going to say, I, you know, I, I'm just... You know, I, I've got a, this level of education. I, I really don't want to do physics. I don't want to do math. You don't have to. This is called life physics. You know, like the f physics of even putting on your shoes. It's something that I've worked with and taught in, to people who have had no education, farmers in China. And they'll get each one of the steps we're talking about so that you can have a very successful day in any of your goals because you're alert and aware and accurate and you're full of energy. And if you're energized and you're effective and efficient, then you can make it towards each of your goals every day and it just brings satisfaction. And the moment you complete that loop between the goal of something I want and the result comes back similar to, to what you were looking for or better, which often is the case, um, then our whole body releases all these wonderful uh, catecholamines and other hormones that allow you to gap up even stronger. I, I think anybody who ever works out knows that. Usually you do three sets of anything that you're going to do. And whether you're doing a, um, a sumo deadlift uh, or whether you're doing RDLs or whether you're doing a, a rear elevated split squat, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, the first eight, 10, or 12 of them are never never, and I've been doing, working out for years and years and years, are never as good as the second set of eight. And those are never as good as the third set of eight, unless you're getting sleep for the past three days. Then you run out of uh, ATP. But if you've got your normal energy in your body, 
uh, what happens is there's a stair-step pattern to you improving. And some people even know about that, so on their third set, they actually add more weight because they're going, I don't know, I just feel like I can pull this thing up. I'm, this is not a big problem at all. My whole body's just moving. I'm, I'm ready. So there's your clue. Your clue is that the more joy that you want, it's already set up by physics for you to have that, the more you participate in a way so that you're following the steps of physics that in the beginning you may need to use this amount of weight, but then the next round you can use this much weight and then later you can use this much weight. Now how are you gonna know? How are you gonna make the right decision? So now we're getting down to the real key. The reason we don't make great decisions, and the reason why people have so much regret as far as getting towards happiness for themselves or for their children or for their colleagues is they're just unaware of where your big access to success on this planet is. We've already started saying that there's some basic rules that are so wonderful uh, that if you just follow them, you really can have ice cubes in your iced tea in the summer, and you can also boil water in the winter and have hot tea in the winter. So water has a lot of support for your prowess and enjoying things. So the negative isn't bad and the positive isn't good, but you decide your choice about which one you want to be involved in. So what happens on the sort of the negative pole of, of the yin yang symbol is that things are really pulled more towards the matrix. And then on the white side where it's just all clear except for one black dot, which is sort of uh, a little bit of matrix there, but most of it is all the different energy vibrations that you need, all of them to be able to be successful at weightlifting, running, getting younger, finding the right decisions, marrying the right person, having your kids be part of your life, have it all work out. So you're gonna stop right now, just write down and say, there's no decision about anything until you decide whether it's useful for you or not, whether it's, you know, whether it fits your criteria and you have to be awake enough to do that. So your real job, the first step towards happiness is you have to be present to waking up each moment. And people say, um, I can't do that. I say, I, I can't do it. Um, don't you read, Doc, don't you read social media? I mean, aren't, aren't you aware that we're living in the fastest period of time that's ever existed and the people are overwhelmed with data and information and there's so much manipulation in the news, you can't even tell whether it's true news or fake news and what people are talking about and what people are saying and what, what you're watching. It's all just so who knows how to use it so it becomes a headache. You don't get time to digest it and find out how to make it work correctly. Well, people would agree with you unless you study history. And if you study history, you'll realize, uh, if you go back to Emerson, he wrote, a, he wrote two essays just on this. Wordsworth, same time, said, you know, uh, getting and spending, we, wa we lay waste our powers. Little we see in nature that is ours. And what he's talking about is that in nature, you there's vibrations that really make you healthy and happy. It's actually now at Google, uh, they give you time to take walks in nature um, and other uh, Silicon Valley companies to, or, or to meditate or art class or something so that you take a break from grinding in your brain and you start refueling. Now, you don't know how your hand moves out and picks up things, but you can use this hand. So that's the whole joy of this planet. It's way more complicated as far as what's under the hood and how it's all working. And I've operated on people's bodies, I've been inside people's hearts, inside their chest, in their abdomen, neck, every part, head, all that. And people, you know, anatomy's the same, just we have different skin colors and then you have different genetic changes. But that's about it, we're all the same in terms of our ability to have this magic suit that you can drive it around like a Ferrari. My favorite car, which is a Ferrari Testarossa, red convertible. Um, but the question is, if you get to have fun driving it, how come we have so much, like Buddha said, misery? Well, his word for misery and pain is really just much better defined as the matrix. 
And the matrix word, which you know, I've been using for years and years and years, is that it sort of accumulates all the misinformation that you've received along the way in life. And I said, if you study history, you'll see that Emerson said, it's, everybody's screwed up with misinformation, so they're making the wrong decisions. And then before him, you know, there's Plato and Socrates and all those people saying everybody's messed up. People are, don't know what they're doing, and the emperors and the kings are just making misery for themselves and the public. And so there's wars going back and forth. And wars would make sense, except really, um, you're think about it, you're, you've got this country, and instead of having everyone in the country work together and be happy and, and be successful, you go, well, you know, we, we need to have somebody else's country too. So then you have a war. So you're, 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 you, know, you kill a lot of people on your side and their side. Finally, you take over more land. Great for you. Now you've enlarged your country. Now you have even more to manage. Oh, but what good does that do? Well, I don't know. Maybe I need to have more land. And then what happens is that you keep getting more and more and more until you get to be like the famous story um, that uh, one of the Roman emperors cried when actually he had already conquered all that was left to conquer, and there wasn't anything else left to do for his self-esteem or his own valuation or, wait for it, happiness. So he was unhappy. There's no more to conquer. And what are you going to do with all that land anyway? You have to government in it, manage it, make sure the things work, control the crime, control the plumbing. So history has shown throughout all of history, things haven't changed much at all in terms of humans' interactions with this fact called the matrix ever. It's been a problem. There's even stories that go back to the Bible, but remember those stories are also in every other religion in, in some other way, some other format, that shows that in the beginning, man had this huge opportunity to be connected to his uh, all his sensors open and to actually almost be godlike. Uh, in terms of the successes that he could have and the happiness, like in the Garden of Eden, certainly to say everything was there. Everything was there. But then it always says that whether, that whether you're Adam and Eve or whether you're the Emperor of Rome or whether you're uh, Genghis Khan, that uh, you're just going, it's going to go, it, it, the matrix is going to try to trick you. It's going to try to get you to make a mistake. And the trouble with mistakes are, is that mistakes are actually good because that's how you learn. But mistakes aren't good when somebody else tells you to do it and you haven't been verifying along the way that you're making good choices as to whether this is really for you or is it for somebody else. I, went, I had a friend who said, hey, there's a sale at the men's store. This is back in Louisville, Kentucky. He said, I'm gonna drive down there. I've got to get these pants and stuff. So I said, okay, Andy, I'll go with you. So we went down there, and while he's, while he's like seriously looking for certain kinds of pants, I'm like going, okay, you know, we'll have lunch about an hour and a half, and I've got time to kill with this, and I didn't bring a book. So I said, I'll just look at the clothes, and then the, you know, the representative of the clothing store says, you, you might want to try that on, Doc. And so I did, and I said, well, it does fit. He says, well, it's, you know, two-thirds off. Think about it. So by the time Andy was ready, he said, he said, I found one pair of pants. I can't believe I'll look for an hour. What are you doing? I go, I go, I have this big pile of clothes that's on sale that fits me, and I think I'm going to take it. He says, Dad, go on. You know, I'm, I'm the one who goes for the sale, and you got all the benefit. Now, you might say, was I just lucky? Was he unlucky? Was I at the right place at the right time? Remember, one of the great eight is serendipity on command which means things that you really would like to have happen, you know, like I'd like to have my goals work. Um, it's the simplest when you were a kid and we used to play the game three wishes. You remember that. You get one wish, two wish, and what's always the third wish? I want three more. Three more wishes to keep extending the wishes and we'd all laugh. But the key is that we really like to expand. We really, we're like the universe. We want to keep expanding our prowess and if you don't, you really end up, you're, you're down you're not gonna make it. And expansion requires you going up against a resistance. Next step, okay? Remember I told you we're gonna go step by step towards happiness. Now how can a resistance make you happy? That is just not fair. So you're saying to me when my mother or my father or my uncle or my aunt is totally irrational and causing me emotional pain, 
that that resistance is really helping my happiness. Actually, if you're alert and aware and pulling in the energy and you're like um, in Tai Chi uh, or Aikido, you're just sort of let that pass by. You let go of it. You don't hold on to it. You let that be theirs. And then you only take in what's really valuable to keep you powerful. Then that doesn't have to affect you. So now you're saying, wait, the matrix doesn't have to affect me. No, you get to choose. So let's write down the next thing. You get to choose. But it's not like you get to choose. It's like you get to choose, and even when you don't choose, that's a choice. Write that down, too. So you're going to say, what do you mean when I don't choose, it's a choice? Well, because you've become so uh, accustomed to certain choices, like you put the toothpaste in a certain place in your bathroom all the time, and you squeeze it in a certain place, and whether your wife likes that or not, you have a hard time not doing that squeezing. And so you create sort of a matrix situation for her because for her, she's not comfortable with the toothpaste looking like a bow tie rather than ending up, you know, so that you're using all the toothpaste. These are complaints I hear as a doctor, as gastroenterologist, you know, these funny things that happen between people about, can you get him just to follow one simple instruction so we don't have to argue in the morning? And the point is that people argue about the smallest things, but that's not the deal. The deal is you're suffering in your grade eight accomplishments. And until you start winning at that, you're not gonna be happy. Until you start becoming more in your prowess and get with the physics of it, you're gonna keep being like my friend who went out on the sidewalk on the black ice and slipped and banged his back and his head because he wasn't alert and aware to what was underneath his feet because he didn't think he had to. So that's that word denial again, it's going, I don't really need to be alert and aware. No, you absolutely must. And then the next thing, you absolutely must choose every minute. Nobody told you this, I know. They told you that if you just follow whatever book someone gave you, whether it was a math book, um, a philosophy book, a religious book, just follow this book and it's all gonna work out. And, and that's never been true uh, because uh, things are always changing, right? Water, uh, if the temperature goes up, it might start boiling. Uh, if it goes down, it's gonna freeze. Um, if you keep boiling, it'll turn to a gas, it'll disappear. Um, if you decide to take a shower with a, a nice soft cloth and some soap, it feels good. If you decide to take a shower with you know, heavy uh, industrial grade uh, sandpaper, you're just gonna keep ripping your skin if you keep doing it going, well, they said this is gonna work. That's called denial. And what are you denying? You're denying looking at reality. So write that down. That's what you're denying. You're looking at, you deny that you have to look at reality. So some people go, well, you know, I have to look at reality all the time. Well, a couple things you have to do. Not many, but if you have to choose all the time and it's left up to you, that's your big important mission on the planet is to choose what you're going to be doing with your time and where you're going to make your contribution and how you're going to learn and what's going to, how much fun you can have while you're here and how much a joy you can bring to other people, you're not gonna be very effective on your back on the sidewalk in the middle of winter banging your head because you weren't aware enough on how to walk out on black ice. So if all we're made up of is this wonderful, wonderful uh, set of uh, compounds in your body and then there's animals and there's plants, this whole world has sort of been working for the longest time. Remember before there was human beings on the planet, it was just fine. I mean, it was just fine. I mean, you know, they had ecosystems and they had birds doing their thing and they had squirrels doing their things. And, you know, there was their predecessors, but everybody was sort of an ecosystem and it was more the animal kingdom, not the brain that we have. We, we have their brain, unfortunately. Uh, we also have the other brain, which allows us to get out of the matrix. But if you decide to subsist as an animal, uh, when you're born a human being, then you've only got three choices. And you know that you're either going to kill something in front of you, or you're going to run away from it, or you're going to ah, just freeze and deny that you're in danger and just go, I'm safe somehow if I just don't move. And a lot of kids have that when they're, when I did a lot of pediatrics in gastroenterology and the kids, I said, when you get upset, what do you do? Because you know, kids even get ulcers. They said, well, I go to my room, close the door and then stay in there until the upset goes away. And I said, so you hide, huh? Yeah, right. And what do you do in your room? And they go, I just try to occupy myself. 
Because I want them to stop being upset because that'll stop the acid secretion so they won't get the ulcers so, I can take, so they don't have to be on medication. So I'd rather them be able to handle their disagreements with whoever it is, you know, someone at school or the parent, so they don't have to hide and keep waiting. Because remember, I told you that one of the three animal responses, that means it doesn't work for human beings. Got it? Remember, animal responses uh, is you're going to kill this and eat it, or you're going to run away from it, and therefore starve maybe, uh, or you're just going to freeze and hope that that thing doesn't hurt you, which is a bad situation because with kids, when they end up with abusive relationships, whether it's with kids, other kids on the playground, or whether it's with teachers, or whether it's someone at home, they, they, they feel very, 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 very precarious. They feel in danger. They feel unsafe. And you're gonna say, well, yeah, they're small and the parent's supposed to make them feel good. Well, the studies have shown that it really is true that if you grow up in a family um, uh, where you don't get uh, a lot of support that, you, one, you can do it, you can make it in life, just keep the energy flowing and make your goals and make things win, 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 then your decisions are gonna work. Win for you, win for whoever else is around you and win for your environment. As long as you stay in that mode, you're going to have Success, and it isn't going to be easy because it's learning, but what's going to make it fun is you don't do matrix tricks while you're learning because the matrix is what puts you in a place where you don't learn. Hiding, denying that you have to learn on what to do and how to fix it is the key. You can't do that. You've got to wake up. So you're saying that the yin-yang symbol shows you that if you've got the matrix all on one side where it's all dark, with one little light uh, at the end of the tunnel. And the matrix is just all the things that we go through where people are manipulating either you or themselves or whomever. And the manipulation is something like, I don't know, I just didn't think about it. And I was looking at my phone and I went through the intersection and now we have a big old accident. Oh, I don't know, I made reservations at the restaurant, but you know, I didn't call beforehand to check. So turns out things had changed. And then you had surprises. So if every moment is really that quickly changing, what you need to do is to be able to pull in enough energy to gap up. You really want to pull in enough energy all the time to make good decisions. And if you can make good decisions, ones that will make you happy, ones that you're pleased with yourself, and that you can respect yourself, then you're not going to have this suffering for no reason. Or worse, this hiding, sort of withdrawing, and then painting over it, hi, I'm really happy, I'm fine, I'm part of the tribe, which is actually part of the whole animal kingdom, which is, it's a bunch of packs, tribes, with always a pack leader. And we have that in like, I would say 80% of our population, maybe 90% of people just follow uh, a group. In the old days, they used to have stoning when they would stone people. And when they'd interview people, They'd say, you know, why are you stoning this person? I'd go, I don't know, everybody else did. We're meeting in the middle of town and uh, we're stoning this lady for something and then I've got work to do. In other words, just because this lady is gonna suffer pain, what if that were you? Would you wanna be in that condition where people are just stoning you until you're just damaged with a concussion or even dead uh, for something that may or may not be correct? But people deny that it's necessary to wake up. That's why I gave you the word deny first. You've got to recognize the biggest matrix trick is to tell you that you are denying all the time that you have to wake up and that you can wake up using these practices and you can start winning immediately today and continue in every moment. And that's what this whole discipline energy for success is all about. So some people say, well, wait a minute now, you know, if history is the same and people have been suffering since Babylon, the Tower of Babylon, or since the days of, you know, Philistines or the days of war going back and forth and people being just totally either manipulative or aggressive or more like animals, then you're saying the matrix has been running rampant on this planet. Yes, it's true. But that's a choice and people don't realize they have a choice to have the energy be your power source, fill up with the energy, and then you get to have serendipity on command, you get to get smarter every day, you get to get healthier every day, you get more, more financial success, you have better relationships with everybody around, 
including yourself, all those things are musts for you because that's what keeps this whole bodysuit wanting to live the next day. And what's wonderful is you just take the steps. So as you can see what step we're on, that you're going to say, okay, well, I've got this job to wake up, but it doesn't sound like that's going to be too easy. If you're telling me since the days of history, you know, we're going back to Caligula and all these crazy people who ran countries, Stalin, uh, Khmer Rouge, uh, uh, the revolutions in China. I mean, gazillions of people were just murdered for no reason just because the group decided that person's dangerous. There's a book that uh, I wish everybody would read. You know, I spent over 20 years in China back and forth, and there was a book that one person uh, sort of tapped me on the shoulder, this doc I knew, and I always said, you know, the news we have in U.S. about Mao Zedong, which is, I got there right after... Uh, a period where he had, he had left, but he had done the whole communist revision of China. And um, I said, our news is just, you know, you are sort of suffering with this new economy, but that you're happy with what Mao has created. And um, it seems to be just, it was a transition, huh? And he tapped me on the shoulder and said, read this book. So this book was the diary of a professor a teacher at the university who was uh, uh, accosted by the students because it's always the students who set up these revolutions because they're the ones that are easiest to manipulate than the adults because the students yet haven't recognized that they're not awake enough at all to even know that the stuff they've been taught up till now isn't even working but they don't know what does work. So all of a sudden, if the crowd says, let's go stone all these people, uh, including the teachers, that the teachers now who spent their lives wanting to be educators, you know, they're win-win people uh, in the main, uh, their mission is at least, uh, they were endangered and the, the uh, teachers were ridiculed and they were criticized. You're teaching the wrong things. You're allowing people to uh, not rise up to their potential in a, a, a totally animal farm kind of uh, environment. If you haven't read the book, the, the key is that it was a horrible, sad book because the diary in, that this teacher wrote was every day the insults and the beatings that uh, she had to undergo from just any random student who would come up and say, you know, how to head me and say, we, we think that you're a danger to the uh, society and we're going to report you uh, or you can go down and get a certain number of lashes or beatings and read the little red book and then you can still teach. And here's somebody who's, you know, way younger, you way less smart and the teacher didn't want to die. So she went through a number of these beatings until finally on her last day uh, alive, um, when she just said, I can't take this anymore, that there are no people that are protecting us, she jumped out of the window of a top floor of a building and died when she crashed. And that part was added in. I got that information from whoever uh, finally released the diary with the, with the afterward. So the matrix is something that's painful. And it can get out of control and it can be hysterical, people making people wrong and people not being willing to find a way that you can interact. So what do you want to interact for? Your goal, your step should be that I want to win, but I want somebody else to win. I want to be fair to both and I want the community to win. So your big job is, well, wait a minute now. I could buy what you're saying. Except if all of history keeps repeating the same thing over and over again, people keep being ignorant and they're just being driven by whatever they were inculcated with as a kid and then they stay with that, whether they were treated nicely or they were treated mean. Uh, I mean, they even did studies with cats uh, and you, you know about this, I'm sure, where they took these baby cats and uh, they put them in a cage without the mother just after they were born and there was no mother there. So they died because they needed the warmth. They still had the milk and everything they needed, but they no mother, something biochemical, some transmission of vibrations uh, between the mother and the newborn were so important. So 
This is after they were from the suckling stage where they could drink. So you, you would say, well, you, that, that sort of makes sense. Look at the next experiment. The next experiment is they took the same cage, different cats, but you know, just ba little baby cats, and uh, no mother, but they put a wire structure in there that just looks like a, you know, five or eight, nine wires wired together like this. And they covered it with a warm cloth, with a cloth with, that had some heat to it. All the cats thrived. They all lived because they attached to this warm, supportive structure, which triggered in their brain that they were safe. That the thing that's got you bugged about the matrix is that you've been threatened your whole life throughout history that you're not safe, that the world's this big dangerous place. And we started out saying the universe is not this big dangerous place. The universe has just been going on, you know, how many meteorites have fallen on your house lately? Nothing. The only thing that's dangerous about life is that you have to recognize you're riding your bicycle. Am I gonna ride it into a groove and go over my handlebars? Or am I gonna ride on the straight part of the road? You have to constantly recognize this device, uh, this bodysuit is wonderfully adept at becoming an Olympic star and succeeding at all your goals and each of your grade eight for the rest of your life. And people are gonna go, wait a minute. If that's true, there should be more breakthroughs. There should be more people happy, more people successful, less suicides. And that's because of the campaign, the denial campaign that shoves people into fear. And what's the fear? The fear that there isn't a way to access the energy side of the equation, and that you're stuck in the side where you're just never going to have your powers of support to grow inside, and that there wasn't a technique. And th this is the biggest lie you've ever, ever had to suffer. So write down big lie that you're stuck. And your bodysuit, your whole pulling in of energy is set up so that you are supposed to succeed by going over, around, through resistances. Resistance is anything that just causes you a little bit of pushback, a little bit of friction. Remember, friction's necessary. Otherwise, you couldn't drive a car because the road, you would just slide all over it. You wouldn't be able to make any progress anywhere. Uh, so then what is, what is the resistance good news? It sounds like the people are suffering under rulers, suffering under relationships, suffering in jobs, suffering under terrible bosses, suffering with their own, what's going on inside their own head about how they're so self-critical. So what is that? That's the matrix. That's the misinformation. And you're going to go, wait a minute. It's not misinformation. That's how things are. Look, at people are messing themselves up. No, by choice, though. They're messing themselves up because they didn't know they had the other choice. You do. Well, wait a minute. Where do I pick up that I have the other choice? Well, because what's happened is that since youth, the animal parts of your brain were conditioned to say that really you're not a human being. You're something that belongs in a pack, and there's a pack leader. It could be your father, your mother, or somebody. And out of loyalty, your good-hearted child self said, oh, well, I'll just copy whatever that is, you know, and I'll just be like, you know, the caretaker for my uh, parent who's sick, or I'll be the um, smart one in the family so that uh, I can get a job really early and help with the funds or I'll be the person who's the jokester to keep everybody happy. But everybody takes on some kind of matrix role, which is a waste of time because that's not being in reality. That's not who you really are. That's not opening your sensors. You have to close your sensors to be a fake. And what the fake is, is that I'm really happy in this job when you're not. I'm really happy doing um, the kind of exercises I'm doing when you're hurting yourself. I'm really happy in this relationship uh, when it's not only unfulfilling, but you don't have much to talk about, and there's nothing that is really, you, you know how to fix it. So later I'm going to play you this song from U2, uh, the band. It, it, it's called Stuck in a Moment, and that's truly the story of our lives. The story of history is that from childhood on, you get stuck in a moment. You didn't know you'd get out. There was no one came down there to you and said, hey, you got attached incorrectly. They put you in a cage 
where the things you were going to attach yourself to were not things that are going to really support you. You got attached to either being in fear, which means running away, or capitulating and just sort of withdrawing and just lying down and just have somebody have their way with you. Um, or become a perfectionist, you know, and then say, okay, well, listen, if what I have to do is make good grades and play a musical instrument and run for Congress, I got to know a guy like this, um, I'll keep doing that. And this gentleman who did and made it to mayor, um, uh, after he became mayor in his second term, uh, the joke was in the newspaper, they said, Gary, that's not his name, but it sounds like that. They said, Gary needs to know that he can stop politicking and running for office. He's already been reelected. In other words, he's so interested in that fear position that if I don't keep pleasing other people, that somehow I'm not safe. So the key word is not safe. The matrix has its suffering to you because you believe you're not safe. Now, of course, if you jump off a building, you're not safe. But that you're not safe by decree or automatically because of the way the universe is set up, that's not so. No, you're given, you're the head of the whole animal kingdom, and we can't run as fast as a cheetah, and we certainly are not as strong as a tiger, uh, but we've got this incredible, what? Incredible access to the energy with our whole brand new brain and antenna system that the animals don't have. So this allows us to do all kinds of things to be able to, actually almost had the experience that you get to use some of God's toys, like these bodies and these, all the foods you get to eat and all the friends and the dancing and the hugging and the parties and all the things that you get to do and to be creative and the poetry, all that wonderful stuff. Unless you're, like Wordsworth said, that people are getting and spending, working all the time, arguing, upset. Uh, you know, little they see in nature, which means nurture yourself, uh, that is really what you're all about. And you know, I've gone over that with you previously, that there's really all these vibrations that are coming into you and going out of you, that where you're supporting other parts of the planet and the planet's supporting you. And I always pull that story on people about where's your lungs? And people say, oh, my lungs are here. And I always go, mm, not really. Uh, they go, yeah, they are. I go, there's not only half of you. You'd be dead if they were only there. Because this part of your body can only produce CO2. So if you need oxygen, you need all these trees that are making oxygen that you need to breathe in. And if you get the oxygen from that, then you can give them what they need, which is CO2. So you're part of the ecosystem, just like it was for the animals before you. But you're not supposed to be living in a pack. You're not supposed to just find your position. Am I supposed to be third in line behind dog number one, dog number two? You are not a dog. Write that down. I am not a dog. I'm not an animal, a human being. Human beings have different rules. Human beings make rockets that have O-rings in them. They don't get denial uh, that they're just going to be flummoxed by whatever emotion comes up or whatever they've been trained to do. So training and emotions or thoughts and emotions actually play most of your life. And so that's why Shakespeare said, you know, life is really for most people. And at first when I heard this, I was very disappointed because I said, he's really being too tough. But the truth is, the, what he meant by it was not to be critical, but just to have people wake up. But he said, I'm paraphrasing, that, you know, life for most people is a, a tale of, you know, woe and sound and fury and danger told uh, by a, you know, a fool who's an idiot. So it, 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 the life of an idiot and the story and who's been fooled. So why is it that he says you've been fooled? Because you have another choice. And he was writing about the fact that you have another choice. You've got this genius Einstein part of your brain that's going to allow you to make great decisions on how to be happy, how to be successful, how to create threads everywhere. But unless you know that you've got the power, then you're going to, you know, stay stuck. So who are the people that say they don't have the power? Everybody. Everybody has it inside your head. You just keep hearing it all the time. There's talking there all the time. I'll be quiet for just a couple seconds and see if 
there's any communication inside your head. So dollars to donuts, it didn't take long for some voice to say something to you and some emotion to come up like, well, is this going to be interesting or not? An opinion. But what's so wonderful is none of that is you. Write that down. None of that is you. All of it is material that has been picked up by the uh, vacuuming system of the matrix that vacuums up all the information and attempts to either rush you around saying you don't have enough time to lead your own life, you can't be successful, life's a struggle, and have you be on this side of the equation. And remember, the equation works as long as there's some positive and some negative, but it won't work if everybody is completely lost in the matrix. So you all need to start waking up so you can start leading the lives you really want to have and excel in those lives. So when I was in China, what was so great for me was, uh, and I brought this uh, uh, Lohan here today, uh, is when I was working over there about 25 years ago, uh, there's, they wanted to pay me for teaching surgery. And I just saw all these carvings and this, this beautiful artwork over there. And I said, no, I don't want the money. I would just like to have some memory of this temple or this place that I worked or this place where Buddha was, or this place where, uh, you know, the Tao Te Ching was written, you know, all, all those things. So I said, uh, let me just take those home. Well, over the years, going back and forth, I took a lot of these home, and now they're irreplaceable. You can't even take these things out of China. It's not even legal uh, to have, you know, take things out that are national relics. And, and I actually was telling Jay that um, I had Christie's come to just, you know, tell me what they would insure it for. And they said, you can't, it's irreplaceable. No one's making these anymore. No one's doing these by hand and making it from this wood. And this was kept in a temple for a long, long time before I received it. And I have 18 of these different ones, but I want you to see that every one of these has a message. Now here's the message. Here's you. You're this wonderful human being who's wise, maybe a little age, and you're sitting there relaxed. And guess what's at the bottom? You know, this thing, this matrix dragon here, this little guy here, this little dragon, uh, who's not pictured as, you know, the movie Saw. I mean, there's not blood spattering all over the place. There's not ghouls and, and monsters and everything. This is like, this is the matrix. It's something you can handle. And so the message here, notice how he's handling it. He's using one finger. You all seen me do this when I treat people uh, to use the two finger technique, one finger technique, the hand. You can use multiple motion techniques. All those are wonderful techniques for you to be able to learn to heal yourself. But the point is he's showing that even this terrible thing of 5,000 years of history that's been suffering, even Buddha said life is suffering in the matrix, the Lohan is saying, no, it isn't. You can control this dog with one finger as long as you've got the energy. And that's the lesson. He's got the energy so he's not sweating. So write it down that the matrix is not this big, huge, horrible thing. As a matter of fact, on the side of the energy, you're the big part, and the matrix is really small. And it's inconsequential. And it's just like having a little pepper in your soup. But it's not something that you have to be completely afraid of. And so fear is really inappropriate. When people say, well, you know, you're saying I had these terrible childhood experiences. Okay, I got it. But science has proved that even with PTSD, for which they found out almost everybody has some shred of PTSD as they were growing up uh, in whatever culture, that they are in danger of keep replaying that incident as if it was still going on. And why do they do that? Because that part of the brain, no one ever told them how they're going to have to grow the human part of the brain successfully. And that part of the brain is just the leftover part that has to do with the pack leader, the animal. And that's the reactive part. So you're gonna, people say, you mean I don't have anything to fear? No, you just write down fear, verify. Danger, verify. Conversation, verify. Emotion, verify. 
And I'm going to teach you how to verify after we do this breathing exercise, this guided visualization. But I want you to recognize this is you now with the energy and doing the energy practices every day. And this is what's going to happen to all the resistances. It's just going to be something that's going to follow your instruction. And I think you know, you've seen someone who knows how to train a dog, if you've ever had one, that it's really never the dog that's the problem. That because when the trainer comes in, the dog immediately goes, Doop. he's down like this. And when the trainer, we have a couple famous dog trainers uh, that have been involved with the energy, it, and they trained me on how to do this. I was shocked because they, they said, it's just the energy, same thing. You have the energy position that this dog, you can communicate to the dog and you've got guidelines for what's gonna be win-win for you and win for the dog. And the dog, as soon as he knows that you are way ahead of every other animal on the planet, the dog will then follow suit. So your memorized fear situations is really just keep thinking that you're way back there when that happened and promoting that that could be happening in the future when it's not. It's just the emotion keeps playing and then circumstances keep getting in the way. So close your eyes and let's take everything off your lap and we'll do a guided breathing visualization. And the most important thing in a guided breathing visualization, the rapid transformational vibrational technique, is that it's very, very special. And what people have come back to me after years of being trained, uh, because I've been doing this for a number of years, maybe eight, eight, 15 years ago, or maybe 17 years ago, I've come back recently. And they said, I've been using all these techniques. I'm now super successful. I'm a philanthropist. I have these other people. Do you have anybody who needs support? for developing their business. We're interested in mergers and acquisitions. And we know that if they've been through your program, they probably you know, want to do good. They want to win-win. And what I'm saying is that these practices are physics. It's just things that Lao Tzu worked out over the years that allow you to keep your sensors open. And one of these that you can use, you're going to be using it frequently uh, in the homework that we're going to be doing together, and I'm doing it with you, uh, is that you're going to actually take time uh, as many times as you can a day to put yourself in the place where you are not only not afraid, but you know that you can handle the matrix even with one finger once you're in the energy. And actually one thing that I had to do with the Grand Master uh, early on was he was always putting us through these physical things. So you had to be able to do a push-up with your hands, and then push-up with your fingertips, and then push-ups with three fingertips, and then push-ups with two, and it, it goes on and on from there. And you, it's not you using your muscles to push yourself up there. You're actually pulling in so much energy that your body lightens up and you can actually ascend off the ground with just you know, two or three fingers. So put your phones away, keep them quiet for just this period, and relax, close your eyes, and let's just take a moment together to say that, okay, so what is it that would be great to recognize about this wonderful space suit that we get to operate in? That no one in all the years of medicine has been able to figure out how you can even pick up a pen so they could duplicate it. Uh, or they, that they could make a body grow to the age of, 85 or 100 or 200 and still have everything functioning when it all started out with the size of uh, you know two you know two pinheads a sperm and an egg getting together and then it all succeeded from there and it kept healing itself so if you get into that power that you're going to win this lifetime and it's set up for you to win then all you need is the steps so let's put ourselves in this rapid transformational vibration technique this special technique where all that's necessary is for you to pull in the vibrations. And just like when you're breathing in oxygen from the plants, it's not that difficult. When you're breathing out CO2, it's not difficult. It's just breathing. So same thing with connecting to all the energy that you need and getting rid of all the matrix. It's just part of a natural process as we just relax a bit. So if you relax and just let you know, your arms fall to your side, and let your neck relax back, let your head just take it easy. Um, it's okay if you have thoughts. 
It's okay if you have emotions, because you're going to learn soon they're not you anyway. Oh, no, that is not you. No, you are head of the whole shebang here. You were destined by Mother Nature, God, to actually turn this planet around. That's your mission here. But you can't do it without, you know, really your strength. You can't do it if you're weak. So you may not feel strong right now, but remember I told you that with doing those push-ups, it wasn't that I felt I was using strength to be able to do the more difficult ones. It was that actually I was having this experience and just like doing the sumo deadlifts that my body was somehow absorbing more energy. So it was just easier for me to lift the weights or do push-ups every day. And that happens every day in my life. That each thing that I planned with every goal becomes easier and easier and easier to do that. And so tomorrow that brings you back in the game. So you want to do it again. So just let your body take a break and start breathing as deeply into your chest and your abdomen and, oh yeah, your back. So that's three places I want you to breathe into. And you don't have to make big gusts of wind. But what you do have to do is enjoy the breath. Now, this is your first step where we're talking about happiness. We're going to enjoy the breath. Up till now, I said, don't fake yourself out and say, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, and say, I'm enjoying things when actually, you know, you've got, you know, toilet paper on your shoe and you stepped in dog dew and it smells and people want you to like clean it up. Even if you're happy, you can't ignore the odor. So. Why not be truthful? Why not find out how you can actually determine reality for yourself and for everybody around you so you can be a big support, a big contribution? It's going to be very easy once you recognize you're not going to deny that there's a tug of war going on. Tug of war is, are you going to be willing to pull in the energy all the time and be one of the greats in life and just keep going for it and enjoying going for it every day? Or are you going to be one of the people that says, you know, I'm stuck because I have this pain or this thought? Well, everybody has the pains and thoughts. And everybody is supposed to recognize that's not them. So breathe your front of your chest, your lower abdomen, your back. And what you're going to find out is that it's possible, even though you have no idea what your brain structure looks like. Maybe you've seen a picture of your thalamus and the black nucleus and the red nucleus and the hypothalamus and the amygdala and all these places that are associated with stress. Maybe you can picture your brain. It's okay if you can. The important thing is that's not even the problem. Brain's working fine. What's the problem is you're not choosing according to what's out here in reality that works for you. So... It's not lack of intention, yet you desire that, but you're still following these guidelines, these rules that are based on mostly attachment to some animal position. And the animal position is going to steer you wrong every time because you don't belong in the animal world. You don't. So Lion King, yay, you don't belong in the animal world. You're not supposed to have a pack leader. You're supposed to be an individual that makes a contribution and grows all your unique talents. Whether you're going to be a famous photographer or you're going to be a famous policeman or a famous stockbroker, whatever it is where you feel you're really gaining on what the wonderfulness is in this process of life and being able to participate every day. So some people say, well, you know, it's a bodysuit. Everybody has one. Okay, if you want to take that, I'll tell you what. Let's make you a, uh, <clears throat> a contest. And what we're going to do is you get to have $100 million. And the only trade for that is we're going to cut off both of your arms. Because you say the bodysuit isn't that important. You have to make some trade, you know. So we'll cut off both your arms. And you'll just have to work with maybe a prosthesis or something. You'll probably be able to afford it. So do you want, to, do you want the $100 million or do you want the surgery? Or do you want to, like, get another deal? Of course you want another deal because it's not win-win. It's lose you win the money, but you lose your arms. So anything that's win-lose or lose-win, you're out of there. So take a deep breath and let all the lose information that's inside your head or inside your feelings or inside your body just sort of escape for a while. 
just as if there was like a gazillion little holes, uh, like these sensors sort of look, uh, all over your body. And they're just, just releasing, just like when you release CO2 out of your lungs, just you're just constantly making these waves in the air of CO2, while waves of gas, waves of oxygen are rolling towards your lungs and you're breathing them in. So it's just as easy for you to take another vibration, these matrix vibrations, this little dog, uh, and just let them out. As a matter of fact, you could just breathe them out. Why don't you right now go, breathe in strength in all your grade eight, breathe in wisdom, breathe in being alert and aware, breathe in health, and then breathe out, you know, denial, ignoring reality, pain, pick one, fear, anything that gets in your way, because all of them are unassociated with what reality is for you to succeed in. Because the fear is being adjuncted to something that has nothing to do with fear. It's just, you're a person who pulled that one. Other people pull in withdrawal. Other people pull in um, that they're going to fight. Other people pull in they're gonna give up. There's so many different things that you can do that will reduce you to non-human participation and suffering. But the fact is that as soon as you decide to be the big person on the planet, then you don't have to listen to that noise. But it isn't that easy to shut the noise off in the beginning because you've been trained by, you know, transgenerational after generation after generation that your parents were complaining about that or your grandparents were or your great-grandparents were or all the way back to who knows who who said that, you know, these kind of people and those kind of people and these kind of things when the truth is each person's individual, each person gets the right under the sun to be self Realize, and that's the big S, the big self, the one that allows you to do jump on a high dive and do a flip or hit a baseball or figure out a math problem or graduate from a program that you're interested in. You have no limits in the energy side, but breathe out all the fear. Breathe out all the worry. Breathe out all the confusion. Breathe out the brain fog and breathe in. I'm alert. I'm breathing in awareness. I'm breathing in clarity. I'm breathing in good decisions. So let's hear yourself breathe. You breathe about 12 to 16 times a minute usually. Some people breathe faster when you're exercising. But see if you can take with each breath a position, just like our statue here, of, hey, in this breath, I'm choosing this side of the yin-yang symbol, and I know it works by physics, and physics is going to hold me true. Breathe out fear. Exhale fear. And breathe in strength. Bring, breathe in joy. And this is a breathing exercise. You're not doing this while you're driving a car or when you're in the middle of uh, something where somebody's asking you to do something or depending on you, but it is something that you wanna make sure that whenever you perform anything that you're gonna do, whether it's playing golf, miniature golf, or whether it's um, uh, finding the right person that you wanna uh, marry uh, or date, is you have to somehow be correct that what you're going for is really there. Because what's, what's so many people have decided uh, with the huge divorce rate and that doesn't even count the people that don't even get married to get divorced, is that they are always falling in love and then falling out because things are uncomfortable, they're painful. It isn't that they wanted it to not turn out well, otherwise they wouldn't have gotten into it. So that study's been done. So the thing is you gotta catch it before you make the decision. So that means you have to put your bodysuit your wonderful spacesuit in a condition all the time where it's working. Now, the way to do that is let's do it together. Breathe in clarity and my body feeling really flexible and strong. And breathe out 
fear and worry. Pick something else to breathe out. Breathe out other people disliking you. Breathe out worry that somehow you're not in an appropriate clique or group of people, therefore you can't succeed. Breathe it out. Now breathe in that you make great decisions and no matter where you are, you're efficient, effective, and energized, the three E's. Breathe in efficiency, effectiveness, energy, and breathe out brain fog, confusion. All those are not part of the energy system. They're all part of the matrix resistance system to drive you back into Animalville, which is not what you're meant to do. You're meant to enjoy this planet and take advantage of all your talents. So let me hear you do it again. Breathe in one of your grade eight, like uh, wonderful, romantic, or happy and healthy relationships with everybody that I connect with today. People I know and that I don't know. Picture yourself breathing that in. And then breathe out, you know, any fears of talking to people or fears of having to ask for the sale or fears of having to go work for two hours and then make it home in time. Any worries, any certainties that you're stuck or that you can't move. Just recognize there is no certainties in that amygdala and the rest of your brain. It is all just recorded nonsense of unworkability from history. And you, as soon as you pull yourself into the right energy space, you know, you, you do something no human being's ever done, which is win the Olympics on the pummel horse with one leg only. The other leg she fractured it in the run beforehand. But she nailed it and the whole team won because of her but not because of her alone, because she didn't get locked into that there was something she's not supposed to be doing. And you can see, and I've shown you in a previous video, that she's talking to herself that you can do it, you can do it. In other words, breathe in, I can do it. And breathe out that my body's gonna let me down, or I'm afraid I'm gonna get hurt. Breathe it out. <sighs> breathe in, I'm gonna be making a ton of success and finish early today. Breathe in that you're going to be so successful at being on time. And then breathe out that, you know, that there's going to be anything that blocks you from getting anywhere, any person or any, any, anything that goes on, and that it's always going to be win, 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 so that no one's you know, getting out of your way because it's bothering them. It's to their advantage. And pick each one of your eight. Pick one right now. Pick financial. I want money to come in multiple ways today and make smart decisions on how to bring that in. And then breathe out any experience that I don't deserve it, or I'm afraid I don't know how to do it, or I'm not the right person for this whole process called learning. Breathe out all that stuff. And the reason you want to breathe it out is because it's totally not you. It's not real. It's just stuff you picked up along the way. And you picked it up because other people picked it up because it's so easy to have sort of mob hysteria, which is the whole field of sociology is based on the fact that people can be studied as groups, just like they can be studied as individuals. The groups act a certain way. And you're part of a group of people who absorb the matrix and don't let go of it. And with each one of these breaths, you're now gonna say, Breathe in, you know, equanimity, looking forward to the future, being happy, and then breathe out and say the word and let go of stress, worrying, conflict, confusion. Just breathe it out. Let go of it. Letting go is the key. You've been trained that you had to hold on so tightly to these misinformation pieces that there's been no room for you to grow.
take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. And remember, the resistance is there so you can learn. So you're going to say, wait a minute, I'm breathing out? Is, is, I, what am I learning about that? You're learning what's working for you and what's not working for you. But you do get to tangle with the resistance. You do get to tangle with it. Imagine that you're one of these little tiny plants that we had in grade school. Uh, the plants were like seedlings. And we had to put them so many inches under the dirt. Because if you put them just on top of the dirt, they, they wouldn't grow, they'd die. They needed the resistance of a certain amount of weight on top of that beginning seed seedling for it to then feel the pressure of that that would stimulate it so that it would become all it's supposed to be. And you are the same thing. So right now, even though you feel like, yuck, I'm breathing out all this yuck, it's the same as the plant. It goes, yuck, I'm fighting my way up through all this dirt, but it's good for me. It's actually going to allow me to win because I know the game now. I'm going to be stronger on the other side. So close your eyes. Keep them closed, take a deep breath, and make a goal that for your breaths on the break, that you're gonna remember with each breath you take that you're gonna be breathing in something good that you want, because you are the top of the pyramid as far as the kingdom here. And God, Mother Nature has the physics set up so that you can do anything, create anything, create a jet, create a swimming pool, create a job, create children. You do all these wonderful things. How it happens, that's not part of the training program, except there's steps to make sure that you're using the energy or that you're being thrown into suffering by trying to use the matrix, which never works. It's always a lose win. So pick something now, make a wish, and see yourself just a couple minutes from now when we open our eyes. Breathe out all resistances to you being able to get this goal. Fear, doubt, <sighs> confusion. <sighs> and breathe in. I feel more alert than I ever have been. I feel more like flexible. My body's really moving and grooving. I'm getting better each moment. Breathe that in. You get to choose that. It's not magic, it's physics. And take a deep breath, smile, and then feel your feet and come back in the room and recognize that you're gonna drink some tea, but you're gonna monitor your breathing, and then I'm gonna check with you on how you did on the other side of this and show you some more steps up that are gonna allow you to do this even easier and better, but you gotta tangle with the resistance or else no plant is gonna grow. So the tangling is you monitoring the breathing for right now. Deal? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm.